Manny Flores is co-founder and chief executive officer of Austin-based Latin Works, an award-winning advertising agency specializing in cultural branding. After spending nearly two decades at Anheuser-Busch as vice president of marketing development, where he is spearheaded breakthrough marketing programs, Manny brings to Latin Works brand development and segment market marketing expertise. Under his leadership, Latin Works has been named Agency of the Year by Ad Age three times and recognized as one of the, one of the top agencies in the year as, an, as noted by Ad Age A-List. They've also been named Small Agency by, year, by the Year of Ad Week. Additionally, Latin Works has been awarded nine Kane Lion Awards and many national and global accolades for their work. Latin, Latin Works remains the most awarded agency in their class. In 2013, Manny was appointed to the Department of Public Safety and commissioned by Governor Rick Perry. He serves the state of Texas as DPS commissioner and travels across Texas on state business. He's an advisory board member of the Helping Hand Home for Children and United Way of Greater Austin. He's also the, he is also past co-chair of Greater Austin Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Celebrando Austin, an event and past member of the St. Michael's Academy Board of Trustees. Many lives in Austin. Manny lives in Austin with his wife Janice and has two daughters, Jessica and Caitlin. He's an avid boater and enjoys hunting and fishing on the Texas Gulf Coast. Can we please welcome Manny Flores? So, That's so sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. That was very sweet, very nice. Who is this guy, Manny Flores? Uh, I want to also thank Leticia Acosta, the director of Suviendo Program. What a great job she's done this week, Leticia, thank you. Now I hear a lot of, y'all were up at eight o'clock and many in bed by midnight. Is that true? How many, how many? And later, <laughs> till two o'clock in the morning, raise your hand, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, look at that. A lot of hard work that went into this program. Congratulations, students, congratulations. I, uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to have about 11 or 12 minutes of formal remarks, okay? And then what I'd like to do is share with you some commercials. You want to see some commercials? And then we'll go into a Q&A. Does that sound good? So to all the Subiendo students here this week, it's been a long, rigorous week, a week of success. I want to congratulate you. What you've accomplished in the last five days or so is, is no easy feat. And as you head home today or tomorrow or the weekend, know that the skills and knowledge that you've acquired at this academy will serve you well, not only in college, but down the road in your careers and beyond. Students, students, you should be proud of yourselves of how far that you've come to reach your goals. And I hope you're excited for what the next year holds for you, the class of 2019. Yeah. And hopefully you'll select UT, maybe. I want to encourage you to look around you. Look at, look at the people sitting at the table, the room. Everyone's immensely proud of you, students. It's quite something to see this crowd filled with so many parents and, and the loved ones that have traveled here today, cheering you on and who will be cheering you on even more next year upon your graduation. Behind each of you is truly a remarkable network of supporters, parents, extended family members, friends, teachers, coaches, mentors, all of whom have helped guide and shape you into who you are today. Let me address the supporters in the room, the parents, the extended family members, you're the ones who challenge your student to reach for their dreams, or in some cases, even drag them kicking and screaming down the right path. You are an important part of the reason they have come this far, and I know you're filled with great pride and love for them today. Thank you for that support and for believing in them. Your love and encouragement has been and will continue to be a significant part of their success, and it holds a special place in the story of their life, their future, their journey. And speaking of that future, I hope that each of you students know that you have the potential 
to change the world that we live in. And you have the power to create a spectacular life of your own choosing. You are creating the future right now, in this moment. And through everything you achieved at this academy, and in every action you take or choose not to take. Your presence here and participation in the Subiendo program is proof that you have given your future a great deal of thought and consideration. And you've made and will continue to make the right choices for continued success. With all this talk about the future, I'm reminded of my own history and allow me to digress a little bit and talk about my history that in many, many respects is identical to yours. As a fourth generation Texan born and raised in the west side of San Antonio, I know we have San Antonians here, do we? Yeah. I learned a great many values and lessons watching my family and especially my dad who was a bus driver for the city. In the summers when I was a kid, I was about well, I was about as tall as I am now, right? I'd ride along with Dad on his route. <clears throat> He'd sit me in the, in the seat right behind him. And as people got in and off the bus, he would allow me to stand by the coin box. And they'd drop their change in there. And he would allow me to push the lever as the change would fall in the safe. It was a great learning experience for me and a lot of fun. I'd watch him, and I'd watch him with every person. Every person that got on the bus and every person that that got off the bus. And what I noticed was the pride that he had in his work. And I, I learned what it means to have this, this strong work ethic. I also saw that he conducted himself with integrity. And he always treated everyone on his route with respect. And they, in turn, respected him. You see, he had become an important part of that city, of that community, of that neighborhood, an important part of their life. Those are some of the values that helped guide me throughout my academic career, my professional career, and they were especially important as I built this business. And I still carry those principles with me today. Just like Dad, your supporters here, your family members, your extended family members, those mentors and coaches back home, they here and back home, they, they are the same people who instilled in you the deep-rooted values that will see you through the next phase of your life and the next phase of your education. Now for LatinWorks. When we founded LatinWorks in 1998, we had a, a burning desire to create a Spanish langu language advertising agency based on insights, insights, research, and strategy. And at the time, uh, there were many spots on the air that aired on Univision and Telemundo, and they were just poorly done and not strategic. So from that passion and identifying areas for improvement, we began to share our story and land clients like Beech Nut Baby Food and Ralston Purina and Anheuser-Busch. We pride ourselves on helping companies and organizations build their brand identity in unique ways. And we believe brands live by the connection with culture. Fast forward to today's marketplace. It's a very, very different world today than it was in 1998. Right now, we as an agency are embarking on an exciting venture, a transformation, a rebranding, if you will, not only as Hispanic market experts, not only as a Spanish language agency, but as outstanding marketers and communicators across the entire spectrum, marketing spectrum. This transition is truly about a new beginning with the feeling and energy and a can-do attitude of a startup. Although we will be embracing a new culture within the agency, our values will continue to be what drives us forward. With that in mind, and as you embark on the next level of your career, I want to challenge you to develop and craft your personal brand. This is based on your own values, your passions. Define who you are in the world. Create the brand of you. You can do that by always being mindful of the image that you present to others, how you interact, how you communicate, how you show up in the world, at school, in your community, and even with your family and friends. That image is your brand. Be sure to take pride in that and to develop it carefully. 
as I think back in my history and what has helped me in my career and in serving my community, I'm reminded of some guiding principles that I embrace that have continued to increase in value the more I practice them. And I'd like to share those values with you now. There are five that I've embraced. They begin with integrity, passion, teamwork, accountability, and excellence. The first is integrity. Integrity, demonstrating honesty and respect in all that you do is essential to gaining the trust of those around you. From your school instructors, fellow students, future bosses and community, to your friends and your family. Integrity is not a tactic, nor is it a tool. It's a quality of being, of knowing what is right and doing what is right, even when no one is watching. Integrity. Then we have passion. Passion, which is the fire and that intense curiosity that will inspire your dreams. Right now, you might think that pursuing a glamorous high salary career and that corner office is what matters. But I can guarantee you that finding the topic, the path of study, or profession that brings you joy and fulfillment will do more to motivate you than money ever will. Thirdly, there's teamwork. Teamwork, some of what you experienced this week, right? It's essential to develop trust and seamless coordination between you and the individuals you interact with every day in class, at home, or on the job that you might have. Not because teamwork is mandatory, but because with teamwork, you'll always go farther and achieve more when you embrace what it means to work as a team. Next is accountability. Accountability. It's crucial that you always seek and accept responsibility for your actions and results. And it's imperative that you hold yourself accountable for all you do and that you continue to enhance the relationships you foster at home and your community. Aim to present your best self wherever you go in all that you do. In today's world, you will no doubt be held accountable for what you say and how we behave. Essentially, just be mindful that you're always responsible for your actions. And because of that, you should aim to hold yourself to the highest standard. So always think twice about what we post on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, right? The final value I'll expand on is, is excellence. Excellence. Your presence here today, your presence here this week, staying up till midnight, two in the morning, is a true testament of this. You are the select few who met the high standards of this program and possess the grit and the discipline needed to triumph over the challenges presented to you here. I encourage you to continue that legacy of excellence. Always strive to be the best and continually improve your performance and your knowledge. But remember that failure and missteps are also essential to true success. Failure and missteps are essential to true success. It's only through making mistakes that we learn and stretch to your full potential. If we're not making mistakes, we're not making decisions. We need to make decisions, learn from our mistakes, minimize mistakes, and move ahead. Never be so afraid of failure that you avoid trying new things or exploring new avenues. So students, next year as you head off to the university of your choosing, I want you to consider this quote from Mr. Albert Einstein. And he tells us, the value of a college education is not the learning of many facts, but the training of the mind to think. The value of a college education is not the learning of many facts, but the training of the mind to think. Students, I have no doubt that you'll be great thinkers and great doers, and your work here at Subiendo was just the beginning of that. No matter what subjects you choose to study, you will gain so much more than the knowledge and expertise in your field. You will develop and hone your ability to consume information, question it, evaluate it, retain it, and to relay it in an effective way. 
And most of you will develop a keen appreciation for late night trips to Whataburger or the Taqueria, right? Seriously, I urge you to continue learning. I urge you to continue growing and challenging yourselves to further your knowledge and enhance your skills. It will prove invaluable in your pursuit of an education and your entire life. So in closing, you have an incredible opportunity ahead of you. Hold fast to your values. Conduct yourself with integrity. Take pride in everything you do because you have the power to make the difference in the lives around you. And to the parents, to all those that are here supporting you today and even back home, I want to again recognize all that you've done to prepare these young men and women for taking on the world. In what will seem like a matter of minutes, you'll be bracing yourself for that dreaded college drop-off day. A bittersweet day guaranteed to be very, very emotional and very exhausting. And I'm not just talking about the lugging the baggage into the dorm, but it is very emotional. I can assure you that out of that struggle, parents, that uncertainty that you'll be feeling about what comes next and the opportunity, great things will happen. Through this process, your child, this human that you've raised and given everything to, you worked so hard to guide, will become an adult and they will learn the incredible lessons of what it means to make decisions for themselves. And because of the steadfast support, the guidance, the encouragement, and trust that you've granted them, they will no doubt be successful. And to you, the class of 2019, I bid you a heartfelt congratulations. The future is yours. May God bless each one of you on your journey, and may God bless the great state of Texas. Thank you very much. So, so what is this agency called LatinWorks? We're, we're a marketing communications firm, an advertising agency, and I brought seven spots with me to share. Y'all want to see some spots? The, uh, Seth, tell me when you're ready. And here we go. The first couple of spots are from the Texas Lottery. We do everything for the Texas Lottery, one of our largest, our largest client, in fact. Uh, this campaign is called Luck Happens. Most people don't consider themselves to be very lucky but there are random lucky moments that happen all the time. Luck does happen to people every day. So let's watch two spots. The first called boat, the second called catch. Sort of messed up his hot dog. The next two spots are from the Texas Lottery from a campaign we call Instant Millionaire. And some people choose to wait for particular instance. Some people don't have to wait to play Instant Millionaire. So let's watch two spots. The first call Musician, the second call Phone.
So Skittles, how many are familiar with Skittles, right? They live in their own reality. It's a very twisted reality. So in these two spots, Skittles is the center of the story and they're, they become irresistible and they are part of our lives, very twisted story. Two spots I'm gonna run. The first one is called Mentor and the second one is called Smile. Let's watch. <laughs> so the last spot we have is a starburst spot starburst is it's a dichotomy it's both chewy and it's juicy but you should not enjoy a starburst alone you should enjoy it with a neighbor a friend or maybe even someone someone else let's let's watch this next and final spot Funny work, huh? Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank Seth Hagen for putting the reel together and making me look technology uh, skilled. So thank you, Seth, for doing that. I, uh, I also want to thank from my office, Annalisa Garcia. Without her, I wouldn't, have, uh, I wouldn't have this speech. I wouldn't be here on time. So thank you, Annalisa, for everything you do. So at this time, I'll uh, open it up for some questions. Um, I'm, you may or may not have questions. Y'all were up late last night, I know. Anything at all? Anything? So, yes, ma'am. How did you know marketing was what you wanted to do? How did I know marketing was what I wanted to do? Uh, we just had a conversation at this, this table with these fine young people. And uh, my question, they, they asked me, well, how many years of formal education do you have? <laughs> I have a lot of years, but I only have a bachelor's degree. Um, I did not know I wanted to do marketing, but I had a little side company going to school, and I was a great sales guy, right? And, and what I did, so you students know about this, I fixed fiberglass boats and bathtubs, fiberglass. I learned this as a trade in high school, and I continued doing that. And then they were paying me $2.36 an hour for like a year and a half. So I went out and I started my own little fiberglass company. So, and it became pretty neat. In fact, I hired all my college buddies to work for me. And that's what got us through school. So a counselor told me, with your, with your business, you, it might be a natural for you to go into business and marketing. And so that's exactly what I did. I did not know that until my junior year, just about. And that's why I told you it took quite a few more years than four years to get out of school. But uh, that's how that came to be. 
Any other questions at all? Yes. Um, what was your original major before marketing? <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was, I wanted to be a dentist. <laughs> Primarily to fix my teeth. Now, it, it, it was pre-dental, uh, but I had to take all the math and all the chemistry, which seemed to be a challenge for me. Um, not only that, but I went to San Antonio, where are you over there? San Antonio Junior College. And <clears throat> I was the first one in my family to go to college. So we had, I had very little coaching and mentoring, right? I did. So I went to San Antonio Junior College and I got called to the counselor's office after three years or something. And they said, Manuel, what do you want to do? I said, what do you mean? They said, well, you've taken just about every course here at San Antonio Junior College. I said, I have? They said, you need to get on to a four-year university. So I went on to, uh, to UTSA and, uh, and studied and, and majored there in, in business and, and marketing. So it, it's, it's part of that. I mean, a lot of students don't know what they want to go into, and I, I get it. I understand that. But the more coaches you have, the more mentors, the more counselors, you know, have a, have a friend, have a few friends that you can always call and bounce things off of. I think that's really key as you, as you get into college. And certainly these forums are unbelievable because now you've met people like you from all over the state. And you have leadership like, like Director uh, uh, Leticia Costa that you can call and ask for advice. I think all that is very instrumental in laying out the road work in your journey for success. Okay. Yes, sir. How do you deal with the pressures of being a CEO? You know, uh, I, I have a very uh, strong foundation on how I deal and how I prioritize matters, okay? And I thought about this uh, on this morning driving into the office, uh, and I thought that it would be neat to share with you because my priorities as a CEO at Latinworks is... is is there 24-7, and it's about the 70, 75 people that work at the agency, right? And every business decision that we make affects the business, right? Positive or negative. So the CEO has to make the tough calls. But there, there, there are other decisions that come into play, and I want to share this with you because it's, it's a perspective that I share with my people. And I, I tell them I have three a bar stool with three legs, if you will, three pillars. The first is my belief and my Christian beliefs, and that's, that's a foundation that I believe in, right? My Christian values and the belief in God. The second thing is, is about family. It's about, and all this is about priorities and balance. The second is family. Your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, you'll one day be married, your children. And the third, the third pillar is, is work, is work. And what has worked for me is I try to balance that out. I, I, I don't let one thing outweigh the other because then I'm out of kilter, right? But I know that if I, I have strong beliefs in my, in my religion, if I take care of my family and provide uh, for safe harbor and safekeeping and their wellness and their prosperity, and then as I look at my business, and make it successful and profitable where everyone thrives, then I'm winning, right? So I, I use those three, not just as a CEO of, of, of the business, but a CEO of my religious life and the family life. Does that make sense? So that has worked for me. Guy said, wow. Yes, sir. Um, when you make those tough decisions, do, you th do those more on... Emotion or on what you think would be the right decision for the business? For the business, when I make the tough decisions, I've got a great, great senior team, people. I mentioned that we're going through this transformation because the market is changing, everything's changing. We have new offices. I have new leadership. And we're soon to have a new name. We're completely changing our organization for today's marketing communications environment. So when I make decisions, it's not just me making the decision. I rely, rely on the senior team 
to bring forward that insight and knowledge in their experience, ask them for the recommendations. Now, if we're all over the board, I've got to make a hard call and make the right decision. But really, relying on others, that's why teamwork is so important, right? Teamwork is real important. Yes, the president makes the final call, but he's got an executive staff, and he's got some leaders in, in Congress and the Senate that he also looks to. But he makes the final call. But I can assure you that he listens to others, especially his wife. <laughs> other, other questions? Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, how have you adjusted to the changing technology that has been taking place in recent years? How have we adjusted to changing technology? That's an excellent question. So 10 years ago, we would do 60 television spots a year. You know how many we're going to do this year? Maybe two. Why? Because the marketplace, people are getting their messaging differently, right? You know that. Social media, digital media content. Uh, they say, the articles that you read say GAFA's taken over. What's GAFA? It's Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. And these people are really, really penetrating deeply into the social fabric of communication. And so advertising agencies are playing catch-up. And how can, we, how can we do an end around? How can we survive? And how can we play in that arena? Well, we think we can play in that arena because for, for the uh, Visit Austin client that we have here, we represent them globally. We do all their marketing, and 98% is digital and social, so that's technology. For the Texas Lottery, you know, we were doing six and eight spots a year. A lot of it now is social and digital. So transforming ourselves, we must be, you know, willing, able, and have the people to take us into this digital and technology arena. And we're moving there. We're not moving there as fast as I'd like, but we're moving into that area. Excellent question. San Antonio had a question over here. What is one piece of wisdom that you'd definitely like to impart upon us or something that you'd like us to ask you? Um, I, I, think, I think something that you can ask, yeah, I'm open game. Uh, you can ask me about your careers, your education, uh, family, what I, my perspective on family. Uh, I'm good, I'm good, ask me. I'm good on my feet. Well, in that case, what is your perspective on family? I, I think, <laughs> you know, as we get back to those tenets, the most important people in my life, guess. My two daughters and my wife. Most important people. My mom, my dad, my dad passed. It's all about family. And, and I think the Hispanic culture, we understand that. We understand that. We really do. And a lot of people do. People in Texas, people in the South. Family values are so important. Look around at the world. What's happening? It's the erosion of some of these family values. What are we teaching our children? You know, when my dad said, go cut the grass, I didn't say, can I do it next week? You just go do it. You don't question authority. You go do it. I can assure you, when you get into your jobs and your careers, I don't care if you don't like your boss. They ask you to do something. You do it. You do it. And you do it well. You do it better than any colleague, than any peer that, that is in that organization. And... You show up before your boss gets to work, and you leave after they leave. That's work ethic, commitment. They notice that. They understand that. Now, at our agency, we're on, we're on summer Fridays. It's, it's like, it's, it's a standard in our industry. It's half-day Fridays. God, my dad would have a fit. Half-day Fridays. It's half-day Fridays. But... I think, I think all that begins with family values. Your mom and dad, they weren't born yesterday. They tell you to make your bed for a reason. They tell you to clean your room for a reason. They tell you to study for a reason. 
They tell you to please go to school, get a job, get a part-time job, join an organization. They know. They've been there. And you know when you, when you learn that, when you become a parent and your kids are like, they know everything, right? Kids know everything. And it's like, oh, Dad, you're so old school. I said, well, you know, I, I just wish you'd pick up your room, please. You know, I have to say please. But it, it's, it all begins with family values because those values follow you through to your work environment. And in turn, you, you deliver those types of values to your own family one day when you get married and when you have children, right? So I think that's really, really important. Really important. Yes, sir. Um, since family values are so important to you, has there ever been a point in your career where they have been compromised? No, sir. Uh, well, yes. L let me answer two ways. So at Anheuser-Busch, I was on a plane. Uh, I was at Anheuser-Busch almost 20 years. My, my daughter was born, Jessica, in 1990. And around 1992, we were rolling out a beer called Bud Dry. I was on, on a plane every week for about 15, 16 weeks. I knew something was wrong when she drew a picture in school. Stick figures, you know, family figures. And dad wasn't in the picture. That was a problem. From that point on, I began to realize, it's a, you know what? It's not about, it really, my life is not about, it is about Anheuser Bush and trying to climb that corporate ladder and do all I can do. But man, it's about family too, right? So I made a decision a few years later that we're going to try to get back to Texas somehow to get the girls closer to family. And in 1998, I left Anheuser-Busch. I resigned and moved to Austin, Texas. We opened up this agency called Latinworks. So really, seeing that situation led me to this, this great, great life that we have now, right? So I, I think family values are pretty important. Thank you. You bet. We had another question somewhere. Oh, right. Go ahead. The biggest challenge on becoming a CEO, on my path, on my journey, you, you know, I, I'm going to tell you point blank, I, I think my education held me back. I only had a bachelor's degree. You need to go get your master's. Bachelors are a dime a dozen. You know when I realized that? My goal at Anheuser-Busch was to become a vice president, and I finally became a vice president December 10th or 12th, 1996. I remember, because it was my goal. I couldn't go any further because I, I realized that all my colleagues, everybody had a master's degree. I'm going, man, when did you do that? You know, I struggled for years to get a four-year degree, right? So I think that was a big eye-opener for me. So I urge all of you to continue with your education and get that master's degree, right? And beyond, and beyond. Does that help? <laughs> yes, ma'am. What is your favorite thing about marketing? Favorite thing about marketing? I think it's, it's, it's the learning, you know, the changing attitudes, um, how consumers are receiving their messages. You know, that's really neat to learn and understand. We have a whole media department, and they blow me away on the metrics and how they measure consumer engagement with a brand. Wow, it's a lot different. You know, back at Anheuser-Busch, it was like, well, yeah, that sounds like a good radio spot. We think it'll work. You know, let's get it out there. You know, so you cover your media with radio, with TV support, point of sale in, in, in restaurants and bars. And we would go on our way. Now, it's very sophisticated. And I think that whole area is pretty intriguing. And we, our, our media department that does beach nut baby food for the entire country does a great job. And so that's pretty intriguing, pretty neat to see. Other questions? Anything at all? Yes, sir. What? What was a, one of your favorite books that you'd like to read? Favorite so, what? A favorite book. 
that you'd like to read, something that inspired you? You know, a long time ago, I read In Search of Excellence, uh, and that was a, a book that taught me to, everything we do, uh, we should tr strive to be the best and do the best, uh, and, and doing an excellent, not a fair job. Everybody can do, anyone can do a fair job. A lot of people can do a good job. But not many people can do it in an excellent way. And everything you do, it's not worth doing. It's not worth doing if it's going to be sub-excellence. It's got to be excellent, right? Um, I talked a little bit about creating the brand of you. That is so serious. Uh, I got kids coming in for interviews. They look like they've been sleeping in the street for like two weeks. It's like, come on. It's the brand of you. It's how you carry it. And I'm not talking that you have to dress like, like you're dressed or like I'm dressed. But the brand of you for the job that you apply should be appropriate. And you should always strive to present the best, right? Beyond the best in an excellent fashion. The way you communicate, the way you carry yourself, I think it's very, very important. Very important. And the other thing that goes along with that is work ethic. You'd be surprised the number of young people today that have little or no work ethic. Five o'clock, boy, they're all out of there. Well, no, that's not the way. That's not the way. You know, at five o'clock, you know, if you got in at nine or 10, you should just be getting going five o'clock, you know? So work ethic is very important. And between the way you present yourself, the brand of you, and your work ethic, coupled with a MBA or master's degree, that will, and, and, and if you're bilingual, oh my God, oh my God. You can do whatever you want. I can assure you. I can assure you. Okay, well listen, I am so honored to be here today with you. I thank you for all those really rich questions. Those are good questions. And I wish you nothing but the best. Congratulations and thank you parents. Thank you very much.